to the mailbag? Yep. Oh, I had a yep. little Twitter Twitter stuff. Uh, yep. If you want to hear this, this is real. Sweet. So uh, I tweet. So did you see that that video that Will Osprey put out where basically he was saying his career's been cut short because if he's chosen to do a style that's no. led to injuries and stuff? Okay. So he so he has put this video out, and so I just tweeted out as a good like anybody see that Will Osprey video where he admits working a style that Dave Meltzer promotes to the moon is leading to a shortened career. And when a bunch of course, you know, I actually got a lot of support for that tweet from, from some of my fans because they know I've, I've for God knows how long and just promoted wrestling, wrestler safety. You know, like, why would you want, you know, I'm, if, if you could wrestle safer, why wouldn't you? And I think that's a, it's a problem with, and you look at Will Ospreay, who is like the highest rated guy on Dave Meltzer's star system. And he's talking about his career's got cut, getting cut short. So it's obvious that you can open up a discussion to what is the give and take with you know, what you want to do with your career? Do you want to you do you want to because like you you could you you're getting paid the same. Like when you when you to ask tell a promoter and you make a deal, and and you have your price and he's paying it. Okay, regardless of whether you have a three star match or a five star match, you're still getting that amount of money for the match, right? And if you think that doing more high risk stuff. Get you higher ratings in your matches, which it kind of does these days, you know, um, and it's going to lead to like, you know, injuries and stuff. You think you got to ask yourself, you know, is it worth it? And that's a le- very legitimate question to ask guys like this. But we'll, you know, pe- people, uh, I t- typical response to my tweet, you know, but, but positive, mm-hmm. negative, but we'll, we'll out responded. He hmm. said, please, please give me advice to become as household of a name as you, Glenn. Oh, and OK, I will give him advice. Come up with a, with an entertaining gimmick, like I did. I wasn't the best wrestler in the world, but I'll tell you what: compared to ninety five percent of the talent today, maybe more than that, I still throw a better punch than, than than most of the guys in the business today, and I still sell better than most of the people in the business today. So, and those are two skills in professional wrestling that apparently are difficult to do because a lot of people these days don't do it, don't do it as well as I did. You know, so um, you know, just these guys like. Try to come up with some things that, that you can entertain the crowd. And let's guess, actually, you know what? This segues perfectly into this first email. I'm going to I'm gonna continue so, this but conversation. But was this guy throwing shade at you or what? Yeah, of course. Of course, everybody <clears> throws shade at me. Yeah. So if he's saying, you know, Will, if he's saying that, if you're saying that your career is being cut short, you're basically agreeing with what Glenn's saying, so why take that shot? But right. but, but I will say this. When you're young and you have the ability to do what uh, Jeff Hardy would do when he was young or, you know, so many other people like that, you know, Sabu and people of, of that ilk, you know, Rey Mysterio and uh, Eddie Guerrero. And so you're going to try to do as much as you can because you can do it and you're young. And then once they start getting older and they start wrestling smarter, they get hurt. Or some veteran pulls them aside that they respect and said, bro, you're going out. Because when you're young, it's very hard to cage somebody's energy and youthfulness. And I just think at the end of the day, sometimes you sacrifice the, the present for the future. Because look at somebody Absolutely. like, Ray, like it, so they'll, they'll learn the style. You know what I'm saying? They'll learn to tone it down. So I always look at it as, you know, if you're smart, you'll learn down the road to turn that tone down your style and understand you don't need to do all that to get over. But at the beginning, you got to do something to get over because there's so much competition and nobody knows you. So that would be my response to the, well, I think the, the perception is, is, let me go ahead. Uh, the perception I think among the guys has changed as far as like what giving the fans their money's worth entails. So a lot of these guys, DI would probably say to you, like I'm giving the, I'm giving the fans what they paid for you know, and they think that they have to do everything under the sun and all their moves and all their high flying stuff, no matter how big or small the show is, because they're thinking, I got to give the people live their money's worth. Plus, the crazier uh, that they do is, is also likely to help their career because it'll get them attention on YouTube and Twitter and things like that. Well, let me make a p- p- perfect point here is, bro, they've set the bar very high and they can't sustain and they cannot they cannot reach the bar that they've set. They've set a standard of work and stuff. And it's like Kenny Omega's had surgeries. Will Ospreay's now had surgeries. Says, Dude, when you set the bar that high and you're you're pr- providing a lot of risk to, to reach that bar, look at what happens. Lower the bar. There's no reason to, to do as much high-risk stuff that you guys do because you're, you're very talented workers, but you just think that you have to do some – 
spectacular thing that, that requires real risk of injury and like these the, the adds up right and you're hurt and like you know just like dude so and it, so leads into the first mailbag question which is a perfect segue from marvin zavaletta and the subject is the mid card greetings di and conan just a quick question for both you guys why were the mid card wrestlers super over compared to modern day mid carders besides a few standout guys that i can think of most mid carders today don't totally don't hold a candle to some of the guys from the 2000s and earlier on I find myself being far more entertained rewatching old segments from WCW all through the card. Like, no matter who wrestled, everyone was super over. Bro, because all of us had kind of like a gimmick. Alex Wright would come out there dancing and stuff, everything. Kidman was in the flock and would be scratching himself all the time and everything because he was like on drugs and stuff, everything. I come out there and I'm doing a disco dancer. Conan's coming out there, he's got audience participation in his promo. Bro, we had charisma, we had character. You know, a lot of the mid-card guys today just wrestle. And like we, like here I am today, I'm very healthy. You know, I'm not, I'm, I didn't, bro, I can still go wrestle right now. I'm in great shape and everything. My shoulder's a little bit sore, but it's like I don't have, you know, like something where I said, as I was said I, you know, I, I'm risking my career. I just quit when I, when I could still do it. You know, it's like these guys are having to quit because they're hurt. Uh, what do you think about this, Conan, this, uh, this, this email uh, question? I don't know. I think in general, because obviously, you know, just just in general, uh, I think we were probably better prepared and had a lot of experience elsewhere because, you know, I had already come from Mexico doing 10 years uh, mm -hmm. in the Mexican circuit. You know, Jericho, Eddie, Dean, Benoit, they'd all been to New, uh, New Japan, Mexico, Canada. You know, I was in Stampede with Benoit. So... You know, they just had, I think they had a lot more experience coming in than a lot of these indie guys that they pick up after two or three years, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. who come in green and with a lot of bad habits. Yeah. And those guys all that you mentioned all wrestled worldwide, so they had experience in front of crowds in Mexico, Japan, Canada, and the States. Yeah, you're you just know. repeating what I just said. Yeah. Pretty much. Right. <laughs> here's, the next, here's the next one. Jody, you got the screenshot ready in the next question about the yes, AI I and do. wrestling? Okay, I'm cool. late with this, but... <laughs> um, yeah. So Lee Glass, something. Yo, what up? This is Conan, and I host Keeping It 100 with my co-host, Disco Inferno, unfortunately. Well, I'd say you're my co-host. Listen, every Thursday here on Spreaker, we talk pro wrestling, sports, movies, music, TV, pop culture, and some politics. It's everything the rest of the pro wrestling podcasts are not. Tune in to hear myself, the superior one, educate and inform. Tune in to hear me bury Disco. That's very disrespectful. Join us every Thursday on Spreaker and keep it 100. Boom!